Strip everything down to image, word, idea. Without narrative, it means nothing. This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Welcome to Super Sentai Sanctuary. Join me as I analyze Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers. Some bonds aren't meant to be. Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers Episode 1 analysis. This is the very first episode of Super Sentai Sanctuary. I will be discussing what Taro means when he says some bonds aren't meant to be and how that might affect the rest of the show. But first, I'm going to go over the credits and some other stuff. So, Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers Episode 1 is called The Wild Avataro, I believe. Uh, it was originally aired March 6, 2022. The writer is Toshiki Inoue and the director is Ryuta Tasaki. The uh, source for that is from a, uh, a wiki, which is linked in the, uh, the show notes over on mgmunus.com. The synopsis is... Uh, I'll go ahead and read it this time. 21 years ago, a peach-shaped capsule flowed... <laughs> flowed? Fell? Well, in front of a man, there was a baby in it. In the present, Haruko Kito, a high school girl who... Haruka, I meant to say if I didn't. <laughs> uh, a high school girl who won the manga award for her debut work first love hero, suddenly comes to a turning point. She's attacked by a mysterious monster, helped by a mysterious hero, and after putting on mysterious glasses, or sunglasses, she could see the mysterious world. Lot, lots of mystery here. Uh, and she transformed into a mysterious hero, Oni's sister. Uh, what? <laughs> Sorry. Is this written by uh, the guy who wrote Double? Um... Anyway, what happened, or sorry, what appeared before Haruka was the bright red hero, Don Momotaro, with a flashy peach on his forehead. So, anyway, moving on. Uh, I've got negative stuff about this episode. I got some bad thoughts and bad feelings that it gave me, and I'm going to share them with you right now. So, the pheasant looks rough. I can't remember what his name. He's like Pink Brother. No, he's not, they don't use the colors in this. So, he's going to be, I don't know, Pheasant Brother? Is that what he's going to be? She's Oni's sister. Uh, anyway, so... He just he doesn't look so great um i'll go into that a little more later and uh anyway the next thing is that the uh, the monster designs are a bit muddy um yappy who was the guy from her class who was jealous of her and her boyfriend maybe he was in the ping pong team and then he quit and then he was nailing stuff in and then he got you know taken over turned into a monster or whatever so he was a monster and then one of the guys he, the last person he attacked was the gold medal uh, Olympic or Olympian, you know, table tennis ping pong player, and he also got turned into a monster. Somehow he got turned into a monster by the uh, blue Ultraman, <laughs> the blue knight or whatever he is, and uh, that's kind of weird. But my point is, my larger point is that I don't know if the distinction or if there is a clear distinction between the design of either monster. Like, they look like they could have been from the same team, possibly. And we only saw them for a short amount of time, so perhaps I'm being a little bit unfair, but I think they have to look drastically different. And if they don't, uh, that's a failure on the design side. So anyway, uh, last thing negative is that the uh, pacing may have been too fast. Like I said, I didn't really have time to tell uh, the two guys apart. Uh, we had, you know, two monsters in the episode plus a bunch of mooks. And uh, the, then there was a third. No, there was two monsters in the beginning as well. So there was a total of four monster suits in the show. One of them is the Blue Knight, which is kind of heroic, but could definitely be like an evil ultra. Um, I watched a, like the first four or so episodes of Trigger and he looks like he could have been one of those guys. So uh, anyway, the um, yeah, there were four monster designs. I can't tell how the monster that he destroyed in the beginning was linked to either of the two monsters towards the end of the episode. Although I guess maybe there's a similarity between the ping pong monster and the monster that he destroyed in the beginning when he rescued Haruka, but the night monster doesn't really stand out in my mind as being that different from the other guys. So yeah, I don't like that. Something there I do not like. So moving on to the positive stuff I do like. Uh, Taro, or uh, Don Momotaro's uh, fighting, is so entertaining. Um, I love the energy the guy brings to everything. Uh, aside from his fighting, he made some statements too that were very positive, very cheerful, and I mean, I guess he's a hot-blooded red, but I don't know, I really like it. He's a, he's a hot-blooded red done very well, and uh, gosh, just so kinetic, so energetic. I love all the motion. He's doing a lot of flipping and twisting, and um, it just all looked really good, so I was really impressed by the fighting style, um, both in and out of the mech. So, uh, anyway, I like having a partial team. Uh, it's fun to build over time. We've got, I, I don't even know if, uh, 
Mr. Pheasant, the, the Pheasant fellow, the Pleasant fellow, Mr. Pheasant, the Pink Ranger, uh, knows or is working directly with Momotaro yet or not. And that's kind of interesting. And I find it odd that they're like teleporting all over the place, but I'll, I'll leave that for another time. Um, moving on. Oh, finally, the Mook designs are super solid. Uh, they look really good. Uh, looking through the episode to try to find a, an image for the uh, for the thumbnail. Um, I paused a couple times on the mooks and man, they look good. Like they're just such interesting, cool suits. Uh, they have eye designs on them that are very similar to the eyes in the, uh, like slot machine app game that Haruko was playing that her glasses came out of. So, um, that's interesting. I like that. Uh, I don't know what that means, but it, you know, it's cool that there's visual links and visual, um, language that's kind of consistent through does that mean as in like a commentator show that somehow the don brothers uh avatar powers are linked to the avatar mooks like I, we don't even know who these bad guys are you know they're not the uh you know the avatar empire <coughs> or whatever who's coming through to take like we don't know any of the motivations for anybody really just bad things are happening and people are getting hurt and i guess uh not haruki that's it's not the right show. Haruka is the Oni sister. I guess, uh, you know, Peach Boy, um, I guess he's going to solve the problem? Anyway, weird. Um, I also thought it was weird because I know the original, uh, well, I don't know. I've read two times, uh, once a couple of years ago and once last year, the, or maybe early this year, the Legend of Momotaros, and I thought he was fighting against Oni, but maybe they were like ogres instead. I can't remember. So it is odd that there's an Oni on his team. And maybe that's why she has the, um, like the evil eye. That's where she got her powers because it's Oni power versus the others, which should be like different because they're totally, they were just animals. There was a peach boy and he collected a bunch of animals who were kind of antagonistic to him. And then they became his friends and helped him out. And he fought these Oni on like an island, I think. I like a castle on an island or something like that. Uh, I believe that's how the broad strokes of the original Momotaro's legend go. Anyway, uh, moving on from that, uh, I have some, uh, some deeper thoughts. I, I took like a bunch of notes as I was watching the episode, which I don't think I'm going to read through those. You can look at those on the blog. Um, I might comb through and get a few choice ones, but I don't know. I might save those for something else. Uh, I'll probably just read the reflections and then, uh, try to wrap up real quick. So I've got, I don't know, three or four things to talk about here. So I kind of took my, my positive and negatives, um, and I reflected a little bit more on them and I have thing, these things to say. So pink looks bad. <laughs> That's the first thing. The actor seems cool and I like seeing him save people from falling debris because it was done so deftly. Seeing him stand and walk around though was tough. Uh, I hope they use more clever shots to make him look good. Why not stilts? Stilts could work, right? Uh, by the way, there was one scene where, uh, when he, after he first transforms and, um, Haruka talks to him, he like leans over and it's a guy in a real full suit and he leans over and says, what? I can't hear you from all the way down there or something like that. And I thought that was a real fun moment. Uh, it was appropriately done because you could tell it was a guy in a suit and not a CGI mess and it played well. It felt like he was up above her and he leaned over to try to hear her and that totally worked. But uh, yeah, what, what they're doing now is not so great. <laughs> I'm curious to see how they'll do I honestly figured that they'll run out of the budget for that and they will figure out a different way to do the effect because um, honestly that effect doesn't even look very polished the full thing i mean if he was just a full cgi I, I don't know i don't know i'm curious to see how it goes and i'm gonna give it a chance for sure anyway next thing uh so are there at least two villain groups here uh blue knight or blue ultra whatever and those uh things possessing people did the night monster and the blue knight uh, I'm sorry, did the night monster that the Blue Knight turned the Olympian into look similar to the Yappy or Ping Pong monster? Uh, as in, are they made uh, with the same design sense, suggesting a single creator? I will track that as the episodes go on, uh, because they should look distinct if they are meant to be distinct. Uh, next thing is, uh, what does Taro mean when he says some bonds aren't meant to be, and how will that affect the rest of the show? Whew. I don't know. He is a baby that came out of a weird robotic peach you know going back to the legend of momotaros uh and then he was taken by this man uh for some reason peach dad is like in a jail somewhere and i don't know why he's sort of directing things uh so that they go a certain way you know he instructs haruka to go find um 
Momotaro and pledge fealty to him. Oh, that seemed weird to me, but it's from the legend. That's why. Um, it's kind of like an RPG. It's like Persona 4, where you go and you, you know, help these people fight their shadows, and then they join your team. It, it kind of had, it very much had that vibe when I read it, and I thought, oh, that's how appropriate. It's very, very japanese -y. Anyway, um, yeah, so, gosh, I don't, like... Is their bond not meant to be? I mean, they, you know, even brushing against somebody on accident or whatever, as he says when he makes his grand entrance, uh, this is Momotaro, uh, you know, forms a bond between you and, you know, bonds are everything, right? Uh, which, that's funny because Persona 4, uh, the animation, uh, it said bonds are the true power. Uh, that was part of the, uh, the ending song, which, anyway. Child of Destiny is a great song. Anyway, um, getting back on task with this. Uh, yeah, what does that mean? Because he says that, so... Bonds are vital. Bonds are very important. There's a time and a place for bonds, or bonds are easily made, I guess, like, bonds rule everything, right? But there are good bonds and there are bad bonds. So there are bonds that are meant to be, and then there are bonds that are not meant to be. And, gosh, I can't really think of a... Oh, like a, a bond between, a teen, between like an attacker and a victim. I'll just keep it uh, clean by saying mm -hmm. that. You know, that's a bond that's not supposed to be, right? I, you would think so. Um, but then again, growing... Growing happens because of tension and pushback and strife and struggle. So uh, you could say that going through a difficult experience, going through adversity, uh, you form a bond with the person or the thing that put you through that adversity. And then through that, you grow and you can, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of Marie Kondo right now, like you can be grateful towards that individual, even if they were bad and caused you strife and difficulty because of the growth that you experienced through that situation. So anyway, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm going off half-baked on this. Uh, I don't have enough context of the show to know what the show is going to say, so I won't uh, belabor it and speculate way too much because uh, I think that would be foolish. Um, so I'm going to let it play out, but I'm really curious as to what that's going to mean. Uh, I, I wonder if there will be something like there's a cost to everything, like Peach Dad finding Momotaro's, you know, locks him up in this prison or something in this other dimension, and, <clears throat> you know, he can only be released. I, like, I don't know, is uh, uh, Taro having the power that he has now dependent on his dad being locked up? And is there like an exchange? I, I don't know. There, there could be something to that, or maybe that has nothing to do with it, and it'll be totally different. But I don't know. I find it interesting. Uh, let me see. I really like the direction. Um, they have to be using drones during the fights, right? Or either that or, like, cameras on sticks or something. Because just the way the camera was moving around, especially on top of the roof, was really great, really exciting. I, I absolutely love that. Um, like I said, I, I think Taro's fighting style is amazing. Even the ridiculous uh, CGI boomerang sword uh, thing at the end, or towards the end, was really cool. And I liked the mecha. Oh, and his, like... Uh, choreography inside the cockpit and what the mecha was doing, uh, obviously outside the cockpit, uh, flowed together really well and felt really, I don't know, like natural, good to me. Like he wasn't making movements that really 100%, it's not like in G Gundam where you, know, you see, uh, you know, Rain with the thing on her arm and she's, you know, moving the fingers and the, the Gundam's fingers are moving with her. But so it's not like a one to one thing, but it's like it feels right. Like he's making these crazy motions and the mech is doing it too. It's all very energetic and, and, amped up and uh it just feels correct and like uh at one point he got stuck in these blocks that the that the monster made and then he went to jump over it um and then you saw the mech like rushing forward or jumping and it you know it didn't look like the exact same jump or whatever but it worked uh kind of reminds me of the of the Wii <laughs> back in the day playing uh Twilight Princess on that thing it wasn't exact but it felt exact in a weird way even though you knew it wasn't um and then the uh also, the initial thing that he did where he kicks over um, <laughs> to have that ridiculous, like, Gatling knee uh, thing happen. Um, what does he call it? Like, leg buster? Like, Don leg buster? <laughs> anyway, like, him kicking over the pedestal in front of him, it just felt really good and really cool. And the way they married that to the CGI footage of the mecha was just awesome. So, super cool. Um, gosh, I have some notes on the writing, but I'm, I'm pretty much going to leave those alone. Um, other than the fact that, like... Looks like the show's going to be all, all about, uh, what did I say? Hold on. All about bonds. I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see how that carries forward throughout the rest of the show. So I'm going to go ahead and probably cut it right here and just go ahead and get out of here. And I will have a uh, confession time. So this is coming out. I don't know when you'll be listening to this, but this is coming out uh, a couple weeks after 
Oh, it's actually coming out after episode three has aired. So I'm going to catch up with those as quickly as I can, and I'll, uh, God willing, keep consistent with the show as it's coming out. Uh, Comrade of Black Sun's coming out too, so I'm going to be balancing that too with this as long as there are subs available. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, you can check out mgwinners.com for the show notes. Uh, look up top. There's going to be a author, artist, and analyzer tab or menu uh, for you. So you can check out all my writing. You can check out my artwork, which I need to put more artwork up there. It's been so long. I've been so busy. I haven't been able to do as much art as I want to. Um, but uh, there is going to be consistently more analysis going up. I just did a bunch of uh, the Go Ranger manga. Well, I did all the Go Ranger manga. I'm going to do the Common Raider manga soon uh i'm catching up on radiant black and i'll be covering other things you know comic books uh tokusatsu star wars stuff as well um so anyway go ahead and look for that stuff like i said the uh uh i should make an rss for this or you know podcast feed for this so it'll be like mgmoonies.com slash something something sss for super sentai sanctuary and you'll be able to find all the stuff there but failing that uh you'll be able to find it on odyssey on youtube as well as uh uh, just going to the site and finding it there. Uh, I should be posting this on MeWe and on Float. And is that the only social media? Yeah, there'd be. Oh, and Twitter. I'll, there will be links post as well. You can find all my stuff there if you go to the website mjwinners.com and uh, look forward to more stuff. I'd love to have a conversation about this show with people who are interested and who uh, like some of my takes and who dislike some of my takes. Uh, I'd like to have the. The, uh, the back and forth. That's part of the fun of all this stuff. So anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to leave you with peace and blessings. This is MJ signing out.